How's it going, everyone? You found me. You found Waldo. Good for you. Well, as we all know, September is in full swing. And if you're a fan of rock, metal, death metal, any of the above or anything in between, then you will be well aware of the fact that bands are touring like crazy right now. And, well... Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and yeah, it's uh, it's no secret that there's quite a few of them that are happening right now and very soon, in fact. And I recommend going and attending as many of them as possible because there are some really good ones happening as we speak. And as a matter of fact, the reason why I'm doing this video right now is because tomorrow, well, actually, technically today, since I'm recording this at 1 a.m., one of them happens to be today, after the sun rises. So, yeah, I'm kind of squeaking this video out at the last minute, but that's neither here nor there. Point is, is that I personally am recommending four as of right now, though if I were to do a follow-up video of this later on down the road, that list is very likely to increase because, as I said, there are some pretty good tours happening right now that I highly recommend you do your best to attend if you have the time and money. And if you've ever been to a metal show, then you're pretty aware of the fact that they don't really cost much to attend. Unless you're attending a metal show like, like a really big metal show like Metallica or Rammstein or Megadeth or something like that where the band has been around for 30, 40, or 50 plus years and has like tens of millions or hundreds of millions of followers. Like, generally speaking, metal bands and metal concerts and tours and things like that don't charge that much for you to attend. Like, tickets generally on average cost something to the effect of like, like, on average like 20 to 30 dollars a person and that like 30 is on the high end you know and that's usually at the door too like if you if you pre-order tickets you can usually get them for like sometimes as low as 15 dollars a person and so yeah this this is basically the point of this video is i'm i'm recommending shows specifically for September that I I recommend that you try your best to attend to because there are some really good ones that are happening right now and it should be a lot of fun I think they're gonna be a lot of fun because I don't know about you but the last time I was able to actually get out and go to a concert was around this time last year and that was actually to a Rammstein show and I had to go all the way from here in Alabama and fly out to Chicago. And holy shit, one, it was a lot of money. It, it was way, way too much money. The, the plane tickets and the actual concert tickets total, and also including the hotel room total was, and merch, dear God, all of that combined was well north of a thousand dollars. It was way, way too much money, and God, it it was just it was a whole mess of planning and making sure everything was in order, and it it it, it was just a headache. It was fun, don't get me wrong, and I'm glad that I did it because I'd always wanted to see them live, especially considering they don't really come to America that often. So getting to see them was kind of like witnessing the musical equivalent of a unicorn. But I'm glad that I was able to do it. Point is, is that with other bands, 
it's good to be able to kind of get out and have some fun with other people and just kind of relax, you know what I mean? And if you've ever been to a concert, you know precisely what I'm talking about, even if it's not a rock or a metal show. It's, it's just nice to be able to get out and have fun, you know, for a night. And there's a few, like I said, coming up th throughout this month. In particular, the most recent one, soonest, is happening later today. Oddly enough, and fortunately enough for me, it's happening here in Alabama, which does not happen often, because um, I can't really blame them. But most tours and bands don't often come to Alabama, which I do find sad. But again, I can't blame them. But when they do, I go and see them, because it's way more convenient and honestly usually a lot cheaper, not just because of gas and traveling expenses, but tickets are often a lot cheaper. But that being said, the one coming up most recently is Lorna Shore headlining over the Acacia Strain and I Am. And yeah, they've only got four dates on the tour. And yeah, Wichita, Kansas, Huntsville, Alabama, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Greenville, South Carolina. And sadly, which kind of defeats the purpose of me recommending this one so late in advance, which kind of makes it not in advance, but from what I understand, all four of these dates are already sold out. So if you do want to attend this tour or any of these four shows, then you're likely going to have to get tickets off a of scalper, which does suck. So yeah, just kind of putting that one out there now so you know. Um, but even then, it's not really one of those things where you're likely going to have to worry about getting scalped too terribly much because generally speaking like I'm I'm rather positive we only paid 20 per person and in my experience and I have a reasonable bit of experience having attended in the upwards of 300 ish concerts in my life scalpers generally try to get a hundred percent profit on whatever tickets they bought which is insane but if the tickets originally only cost 20 bucks then they're going to try and charge 40 and that's still not that bad it would suck to have to pay twice what they originally cost but 40 bucks especially if you're a massive fan of either the acacia strain or lorna shore or i am it's still not that bad especially if you happen to be going by yourself you know, it's it's it does suck yeah there's no arguing against that but it's still not bad it's it's certainly not a hundred dollars shitty so just tossing that out there now the other one that I'd heavily recommend if you can get tickets to it is Igor and they have had to unfortunately put this tour off for a year so they're finally getting to do this because originally this tour was scheduled for last year and now they're getting to come to America because this pretty much like this is another band similar to Rammstein and a few other bands from America uh, from Europe that pretty much never tour in America. They they just don't, or don't get to, which is sad, because if you've never heard of Igor, or <laughs> Melt Banana, or Otto Von Chirac, all three of these bands are incredible and very wacky in their own regard. They They genuinely are. And they're not typical metal like it's I don't even know if calling the metal is uh, correct but I highly recommend 
trying to get tickets to whatever any one of these dates that you possibly can to, uh, beyond the the six shows that have sold out, which are Boston, Montreal, Portland, Vancouver, Seattle, and San Francisco. Beyond that, I highly recommend trying to get tickets to one of these venues because if you've ever heard any song by any of these bands then you'll know why I recommend trying to get to see any of these bands let alone them touring together especially in particular Melt Banana because and I could be wrong about this and please by all means correct me in the comments if I am wrong Melt Banana in their 30 plus year career I think have only ever come to America a grand total of like seven times maybe maybe ten but it's it, it's within the low single digits or like or like high single digits or low double digits it's it's, it's an incredibly low number because they're they're a Japanese like punk band they, they definitely don't fit in with these two because Igor is essentially impossible to kind of categorize their their main frontman is a DJ and they do like they, they have a female opera singer and a male vocalist who does screaming vocals and their female opera singer singer also does screaming vocals and it's like all i can really say about igor is look them up and make an assessment for yourself because they're both of them are worth seeing it's particularly melt banana because you may never get another chance to see them live. Otto von Chirac is kind of within the same realm as Igor. They just don't tour that often, let alone, from what I understand, in America. I'll have to do a bit more research on them to see like where they're from and you know what, what they do specifically, but I know that they have a DJ but this lineup this this here is is not something that's probably ever going to happen again so i highly recommend trying to get to one of these dates me and my husband personally are going to be at the atlanta date on the 16th at the masquerade so that's going to be really fun um and yeah, so this is it's it's another one of those situations where it's like it's it's very difficult to like I said categorize any of those three bands. Melt Banana is a bit easier because like I said they're they're Japanese punk, but they're very sporadic like eclectic and eccentric Japanese punk and they've pretty much never I say pretty much never toured in America they have but it's exceptionally rare for them to come to America like I said across their 30 plus year career they've only been to America a handful of times I'm not sure exactly how many I think it's around seven ish times but that gives you an idea out of 30 years to have only ever been to America roughly that many times it gives you an idea of how rare it is let alone with a band like Igor, who also basically never comes to America or is able to come to America. It's one of those things where if you have the opportunity to see them, even if you're not a fan of this type of music, it's worth it just to be able to say that you've seen it you know what I mean? It's it's similar to a Rammstein's type of situation, ignoring the very bad uh, crap that Rammstein has been in recently for obvious reasons. Um, but just looking at their 
live shows and things like that. It's it's always kind of been an understood thing that like if you have a chance to go and see them simply for their live shows and for the spectacle, you do it. It's a similar situation with Igor and Melt Banana because you you, you don't know when you're going to get another chance, and that's how I've been looking at it. Because ever since I became a fan of Igor, I've always wanted to see them live because I've always kind of wondered. What on earth would they be like live? What would their crowd be like? You know, how would they sound live? And from the few live videos I've ever seen, it looks and sounds insane. And I highly recommend, just off of that alone, even the crap quality videos that you can find... I highly recommend it because they do have live videos on their official channel that are very high quality and very nice. But, like, ignoring those, I still highly recommend it. Now, the third one that I recommend is far more in line with the typical, like, death metal experience, which is Cannibal Corpse. Um, and it's kind of a, um, it, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's, if you've never seen Cannibal Corpse live, it's, it's almost like a, um, it's kind of like a, what's the right word? I don't know what the right, right word for it would be. It's kind of like a, uh, initiation, if you will, into metal live shows you you can go to as many metal shows as you want and if you've still never seen cannibal corpse live then people are going to say oh well you've never been to a true metal show and on one level it sounds snobby and a bit elitist but on the other level they are kind of right because cannibal corpse has been around for about as long as pretty much any other band in the metal industry and they they're they're about as goaded as it gets not to mention you have a very high likelihood of getting to meet and hang out with all of the members George Fisher Corpse Grinder Alex Webster their bassist and n now their new main guitarist, Eric Rutan, who is the founder, lead vocalist, and lead guitarist of Hate Eternal, and touring with them right now are, oddly enough, Mayhem, the, some of the OGs of black metal, Gorguts, and Blood Incantation. And I've kind of always wanted to see Mayhem live because I've always been a huge fan of black metal and I've seen dozens of different black metal bands live, but I've never gotten to see Mayhem because this is another black metal band that doesn't really tour America that much, let alone any part of the Southeast. And we're going to be going to the September 22nd show in Nashville. And... I think it would just be really cool to finally get to say that I've seen them live. Because, I've like, to be perfectly honest, I've never been a huge Mayhem fan. But just to be able to say that I've finally seen them would be really cool. And as far as Gorguts goes, I do highly recommend seeing them live. Because they put on a fantastic show they are truly an intense experience and that's because i saw them around i think it was 2018 2019 not too terribly long after their album uh colored sands came out and so they were still kind of touring for that and they put on a phenomenal show and much like with Cannibal Corpse, their lead singer and their bass player 
Luke LeMay and Colin Marston are incredibly friendly and down-to-earth and wholesome individuals. Very funny, too. And it's, again, very similar to Cannibal Corpse, where you see them up on stage performing, and you hear what they sound like, and they are not the kind of band that you would imagine being that way in person. I think more so with Cannibal Corpse, where you hear them, and (laughs) you hear someone like Corpse Grinder or George Fisher sounding the way that he sounds, and the same, by the way, applies to Lorna Shore, Will Ramos. And you, you hear the way that they sound vocally and musically. And it's, for a lot of people, very either intimidating or off-putting or both. And a lot of people are very intimidated and off-put by it. And so they don't want to approach these people because they're very scared for whatever reason but the truth of the matter is is people like will ramos from lorna shore or george fisher corpse grinder from cannibal corpse or luke lemay from gorguts and colin marston their bass player from gorguts are all just some of the most sweet-hearted goofy down-to-earth individuals that I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Now, with Will Ramos, I haven't gotten to meet him because I this will be the first time I've ever seen them, but everything I've ever heard about Will Ramos is that he's very much like the rest of them, and it's just he, he's just an absolute, basically a teddy bear. It's just like he, he could not be a sweeter person, but just to be able to say that I've finally seen them would be really cool. And as far as Gorguts goes, I do highly recommend seeing them live because they put on a fantastic show. They are truly an intense experience. And that's because I saw them around, I think it was 2018, 2019, not too terribly long after their album uh, Colored Sands came out and so they were still kind of touring for that and they put on a phenomenal show and much like with Cannibal Corpse their lead singer and their bass player Luke LeMay and Colin Marston are incredibly friendly and down-to-earth and wholesome individuals. Very funny, too. And it's, again, very similar to Cannibal Corpse, where you see them up on stage performing, and you hear what they sound like, and they are not the kind of band that you would imagine being that way in person. I think more so with Cannibal Corpse, where you hear them, and you hear someone like Corpse Grinder or George Fisher sounding the way that he sounds. And the same, by the way, applies to Lorna Shore, Will Ramos. And you, you hear the way that they sound vocally and musically. And it's, for a lot of people, very either intimidating or off-putting or both. And a lot of people are very intimidated and off-put by it and so they don't want to approach these people because they're very scared for whatever reason but the truth of the matter is is people like will ramos from lorna shore or george fisher corpse grinder from cannibal corpse or luke lemay from gorguts and colin marston their bass player from gorguts are all just some of the most sweet-hearted, goofy, down-to-earth individuals that I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Now, with Will Ramos, I haven't gotten to meet him because this will be the first time I've ever seen them, but everything I've ever heard about Will Ramos is that he's very much like the rest of them, and it's just he, he's just an absolute, basically a teddy bear. It's just like... He, he could not be a sweeter person. 
And that's the general theme with a lot of these people. Not all of them, of course. There's always outliers. But for the most part, a lot of these individuals, a lot of these bands are incredibly sweethearted, incredibly warm-hearted, welcoming, and just... I mean, even like I said before, if you're not, even if you're not into this kind of music, it can be a fun time, you know? It's worth it just to, if anything, get out of the house for a little while, for a night, you know? Because a lot of these places do have bars, and, you know, you can just kind of go and hang out with random people, meet new people, and just have a night out and help meet some of these people from these bands and just have a lot of your expectations kind of shattered, your preconceived notions about a lot of these people, you know, kind of shattered about, like, how they really are in real life. Because I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. Now, obviously, people who are in the metal world, fans of metal, and musicians within the metal world, rock and metal, and things like that, already know these things. This I'm, I'm basically preaching to the choir here, and this is not new information. But for those, for those of you who don't know this, to the uninitiated, this might be new information. So this is why I'm basically saying all of this. Last but not least, at least for now, is, <laughs> and I found this to be an, a rather odd lineup, um, this is Cradle of Filth with, they're co-headlining with Devil Driver, it, it's, Cradle of Filth and Devil Driver are co-headlining together, and then in support, it's Il Nino, Black Satellite, and Savage Existence. Now, I'm not familiar with Black Satellite and Savage Existence, so I'll have to look into them. Um, but for these two to be touring together, I think is really interesting and really cool. Because I've seen both Cradle of Filth and Devil Driver, not together, but I've seen them before. Now, it's been well north of a decade since I've seen either of them, but, and they were touring with wildly different bands, I think when I saw Cradle of Filth, they were headlining over, um, God, you know, now that I think, I think they were originally headlining, when I first saw Cradle of Filth, they were headlining over Septic Flesh way back when Septic Flesh first released Communion, and then when I saw Devil Driver, I th I think they were opening for Chimera back when, God, I think it was like Shadows Fall, Devil Driver, and then Chimera was headlining. And I'm pretty sure it was when Devil Driver, I can't remember what album Chimera was touring in support for, or in promotion for, but I'm pretty sure Devil Driver had... I honestly can't remember. It's It's been so long. It, like I said, it's been well north of a decade for both of these bands. But this is an interesting tour list, and we'll probably... this is, Obviously, this is for October... Um, but it was just one we happened to come across, me and my husband Jacob happened to come across while we were looking through upcoming tours, and we were like, really? Cradle of Filth is touring with Devil Driver, co-headlining with Devil Driver. That's different and cool. Okay, you know, we'd, that'd be pretty cool to go see. Um, so, yeah, we, I figured I would toss this one in as, as a recommended We'll probably end up going to the Atlanta show on the October 15th. So yeah, I apologize for 
making this video as unnecessarily long as it is. I have no intention of this video running for 30 plus minutes. Um, but yeah, I hope you all have enjoyed. I hope to see plenty of you at some of these shows or all of them. I think they'll be a whole hell of a lot of fun. And like I said before, I'm sure that there will be more of these that I will inevitably add to the list in the future. But yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Thank you, and see you later.